Hi everyone, this is Dawn and I am here today with my new EX30. Um, this is my wheel. I won it from the last Apple Valley race. Um, so this is my baby. And it is my second ride on it, so I am not comfortable with it at all. Um, there is some kind of issue with stability, high speed oscillations as several riders have reported at high speeds and that doesn't make me comfortable when it happened to me at high speeds then um, it threatened to throw me into a fence that was on my right and I didn't like that so I guess what everyone wants to know is what I think about the EX30 and which wheel is best and the only ones I would be able to compare would be um, the Commander Pro EX30 Master V13 I do not know the Sherman S well enough to um, to speak on that one right now my thoughts are quite reserved on the EX30 because I'm still too new on it and um, and it worries me a little bit. Does it have the torque, the power, the, um, the responsiveness, the build quality? Um, nimble, the clearance, lots of people have been taking it up and down stairs, um, up the dams, down the dams, on the trails, and it's been fine. The clearance issue, I think, was blown a bit out of proportion at the very beginning, and a lot of people are finding that uh, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, it might be slightly, you might have slightly less clearance, but you're only going to find that out on um, more extreme things than your typical rider would need. So in all of those aspects, it's great. Um, how easy is it to ride? I don't think that this is an easy wheel to ride. The Commander Pro is an easy wheel to ride. The V13 is pretty darn easy to ride too. This one is not. <laughs> um, I am giving this one a lot more care than the other ones, uh, partly because of when it tried to throw me into the fence. I do have to lean into it if I want to go into the 40s. Um, this is not as easy to accelerate on as the Commander Pro. The acceleration is maybe more on par with uh, the V13. Um, in, in, I mean, I think it has better acceleration than the V13 and more power than the V13. But the amount of effort it takes to accelerate on this, if you want that same fast acceleration, I'm, I'm putting, uh, I would say about the same effort to accelerate as I did on the V13. Um, that's, these things are kind of hard to say though, you know, because it's a lot easier to say when you have them back to back because uh, memory can be a little misleading sometimes. Oh my gosh. That bump right there, I usually get air and everything, and it's, and it's a thing. And this is the first wheel that has <laughs> made that bump completely insignificant. So I guess that is how we transition into suspension. This suspension seems to be 
better than the than the stock master suspension and even the upgraded master suspension. So I have two masters. One of them has the Fox um, DPS Evil, the gold one, uh, w with the updated links. And then the other one has a really nice uh, coil shock. I think it's a 750 pound coil shock, something like that. And I think that one has upgraded links linkages too. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. But anyways, both of them are, are um, upgraded from the stock shock. Stock master shock, I do not like at all. And uh, so both of my masters have upgraded shocks. And this one's stock shock is better than either one of those. I guess I'll leave my bell on. So, I don't know if you saw, um, that was me turning on my bell and then using it to alert people. All right, so let's do a little acceleration here. Yeah, putting my arm out a little bit, giving it a little effort. Definitely really nice acceleration really nice speed checking my speed I want to get to another screen on my GPS there that'll give me a nice big display for my speed um, leaning forward quite a bit to maintain the speed also there we do have a uh, wind these trails of mine over here are almost always windy, so it kind of sucks. Also trying out some new um, things with my camera. And I'm just being real careful because I don't feel rock solid on this wheel the i do love the suspension on this wheel this the suspension has been great there's a lot of bumps on this section of road and uh oh that <laughs> that bump gave me a little wiggle uh, but i don't the stock suspension doesn't give you a lot of um a lot of adjustments which is why I love the DPS Evol gives you the Evol I'm gonna say Evol otherwise it sounds like evil um, but that one gives you the most amount of uh, adjustments and I love that Yeah, I am uh, having to just work. Like, I have to ride this wheel. I have to pay attention. I have to push. I have to ride. Now, remember, it is just my second ride on it. So I have not developed the muscles necessary to throw this wheel around yet. And um, I'm still nervous about the whole high-speed oscillation issue that several of us faster riders have discovered when you go at high speeds there's some kind of high-speed oscillation and it, um, that's what threatened to smash me into the fence I think I don't know what I felt was that it dropped it like tipped over to the left it tipped over to the right and then it like felt unstable and it felt like it was just shooting me towards the fence I don't know I just ride um, okay so comparison the V13 feels like a sport touring wheel it feels safe it feels stable it feels reliable it's 
um, no, but not a great trail wheel. It is lacking in the torque department, low end torque and all that. So, um, but great sport touring wheel. On the street, commuting, uh, zoom zooms, all that. The Master Pro feels like every other wheel that I've ridden and all my muscles and skill set um, makes it, I, me and every other rider I've pretty much spoken to that has tried the Commander Pro will say that you can just get on that wheel and just ride. And I mean, it's not, there's not much to have to get used to, have to adjust to, um, have to worry about. You can just get on it and go. It's just easy. It's intuitive. It's um, it's like everything else we already have, and it just has more range and more power and and all that. And it's just like great. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, this uh, wheel has sharp edges that hurts, and I still haven't figured out a fix for it. But the I put this pad. It's a cut up yoga mat that I used for my RS a long time ago uh, as a cushion around the edges for that wheel and I'm using it around the cushions for this wheel and it is helping but I do need to figure out a more permanent and nice solution oh braking on this wheel is awesome it is very stable and get a little bit of speed braking is solid 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 this wheel has a lot less you know how the master is prone to wobbles this wheel is doesn't feel like it's prone to wobbles it feels um, solid for braking I just don't understand what the I mean it feels solid for acceleration well, see I just did a weird little twist there. Try again. I think I'm just pushing too hard or something. It feels solid in the acceleration. It's just, I think it's a strange combination of being some kind of sensitive and powerful. So I think that just means I have to learn to ride it better. That is fine. So what was I talking about? Commander Pro? The Commander Pro um, feels safe. It feels familiar. It has all the power, all the clearance. Um, I like that it has the enclosed suitcase design not this naked design i'm not too much of a fan of the, well i don't know i guess they're both okay it's the naked design has grown on me since my two masters but i do like the enclosed box design of the uh, commander pro as well um with the commander pro i just felt like it was a safer ride but once they get the firmware to fix this EX30, then uh, maybe I'll feel that way about this one too. This one feels like, kind of like a sleeping beast. Like he feels beastly. Like uh, he has, he feels like he has a weight of the V13, which, oh my gosh, I think I almost killed that squirrel. Um, Ooh, whoopties. Whoop -dees. Whoop -dees. Um, but I think the V13 is actually heavier. So the extra weight on this is because it's not managing its weight as well as the V13. Uh, when I first got it, it did feel 
bulky and it did feel like um, it took me about five times mounting it before I could just mount it easily and without issue now. Um, but once again, like with the Commander Pro, I didn't have to have that adjustment period. I could just hop on it and just go. So this one definitely um, a little adjustment. Like uh, five times mounting before it felt like second nature. Um, riding it for about 45 minutes before I felt comfortable starting to uh, lean into the turns and hard braking and hard acceleration and stuff like that. So a little bit more learning and getting used to this wheel than, um, than the Commander Pro and the V13. The people that would want this wheel is if you want a long range wheel that also has a bit of bite and kick to it, has a bit of uh, <laughs> a little something to learn and figure out and being able to squeeze every little bit out of it and you don't mind working to get it if it is there for you to get. That's what this wheel is. The Commander Pro, you don't want to have to relearn and fight. You want something easy to accelerate, easy to ride. Um, it, a wheel that really works with you and does a decent job at looking out for you and very stable and uh, <laughs> and has a speaker. <laughs> uh, um, that's the Commander Pro. And then if you want the ultimate in safety, safety is your top priority and you want a wheel that really tries its darndest to not let you cut out and it's pretty, it's a uh, probably one of the more impressive wheels and pretty wheels if you show up at group rides with it. Um, that's the V13. Now, the only thing, so like, I could get the Commander Pro if I wanted to. Uh, oh, the Commander Pro is also a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. And if you buy it from uh, Leem, then you can get a Commander Pro for like, oh God. Okay, never mind. I don't remember prices. But you can get the EX30 from Leem for like 3300, 3200. And then the Commander Pro is even cheaper than that. Now, the thing about buying from Leem and EUC, Underground, which is his uh, little business name, is you get a one-year warranty from Bigode. Uh, he he gets Bigode wheels and Extreme Bowl wheels. So Commander Pro and uh, you know the Master EX30, those M10 fours. So you get a one-year warranty, and um, you have to be like comfortable repairing your own wheel and stuff like that um, he's not going to like babysit you so like what how Marty says is if you are an experienced rider and comfortable and like working on your own wheels and all that stuff then and, and you want to save a chunk of money then get your wheels from Liam and save the money right but uh, if you need or want a big dealer that you can just ship your wheel back to and they take care of it for you and all that stuff, then uh, look into those big dealer ones, which will be like E-Wheels is our favorite, Rev Rides is another favorite, we got Alien Rides, we have EVs, we have, um, oh God, I always do this. 
can never remember. Anyways, so you see what I mean. But uh, if you don't mind working on your own wheels, the absolute best price is Leem with EUC Underground. And hopefully I'll remember to put the link to how to contact him in the description. Okay, so yeah, that's the other uh, big plus about the Commander Pro is the price. You can get it for a much, much more affordable price. Um, I am also testing out these aggro pads uh, from E-Rides. Thank you, Afiz. Afiz is our friend. And these aggro pads are really nice in that they give you lots of coverage and um, I mean you can I love the brake pads I mean they come with that little brake lights too that you recharge and they stick on by velcro so you just pop those on and off these pads give you I, I want to say they give you about the same coverage as the Clark Titan pads um, but they are in two separate pieces the accelerator and the brake pad are separate which is my biggest complaint about the Clark Ooh, that wind almost shoved me off this road um, which is my biggest complaint about the Clark tight I'm not gonna go fast because there are people up ahead and this wind keeps trying to shove me off the road um, and I don't want to go into the river this wheel does not feel as stable in high winds as the V13 did the V13 uh, did an amazing job. Oh my gosh, my banner's at 36%. Oh, that is not good. I am uh, I am way overdue to head back. Uh oh. All right. Well, I guess we will definitely see what low battery looks like. It says that my average speed for this ride is 30.6 miles an hour. I've been riding, oh yeah. My max speed has been 48.7 miles an hour. Now, I need to decide if I want to slow down on the way back, because I'm only at 36% battery. Oh, you guys are going to want to know what voltage. 116 volts. 116 volts. 36 or 37%, something like that. Um, I've only been riding for like, let me see my GPS. Uh, how I have gone 27.78 miles uh, GPS. My elapsed time is an hour and 15 minutes um, total. And let's see what. And my uh, darkness spot says I've gone 31 miles. So it's actually pretty pretty close to GPS which is good oh dear this you squirrel you ugh, have a death wish um, let me switch screens all right we will be conservative with the speed hang out in the 30 mile an hour range um, until GPS, until we start uh, hearing issues, and then we will slow down accordingly and see if 36% uh, battery is going to be enough for me to get home. Because I did not bring my car. This is a uh, all ride. I don't even know where I am. 
um, this wheel is loud it uh, has a kind of a it also makes me makes me uncomfortable I have sensory issues and it sounds fast it sounds like it's going so fast and then I look at my speed and I'm like you're not that fast you shouldn't sound like this um, not like the Commander Pro and the V13 the sounds that they make are all very much more uh, comforting and soothing as you go fast they're not over here like screaming that they're going fast this wheel kind of screams like he's going fast but he isn't really so on my very first ride on him um, within seven miles of the first ride I hit 55 miles an hour on him and it was fine except when he threatened to smash me into the wall and yes I'm going to hold a grudge on that oh I was talking about these aggro pads so for the aggro pad um, I think I'm going to switch back to the Clark Titans um, I do I do love the brake pad of this, uh, but I am having to push so much on this wheel that I'm getting a hot spot on my right um, shin. So a hot spot is just where it's a pressure, pressure building up. So, I'm more than halfway done with this ride. Uh, how do I feel now about it? Uh, it's comfortable. It feels great when I, when I um, take turns. Taking turns feels great on it. It's smooth. Yeah, I think I'm going to try my Clark Titans. Those are my absolute favorites. And um, we'll see how that goes. And one of the reasons why they're my absolute favorites is I don't get, I don't get uh, hot, hot spots on those because that foam is totally supportive and yet like totally comfortable and no hot spots. The only thing... I wish is that um, it was pre-cut like two pieces like these aggro pads are so that they look pretty uh, while being cut and that way I can adjust them um, but I have also learned how to just ride them without being cut and them being just fine with me now without being cut so um, I don't know I tend to be a person that can learn to adjust to adjust to my environment. Would I adjust to hot spots though? Uh, not so much. And definitely not my preference because that hurts. So far, the Clark Titan pads are the only ones that have not given me hot spots yet. And it would be interesting to see if I do get hot spots with them, uh, with this wheel, with how much I'm pushing on, these, uh, on this wheel, pushing to go uh, fast. 
Now, I wonder if I'm pushing hard on this wheel because I am expecting um, master type quick acceleration on it. Uh, this wheel is heavier and I have to push harder to get that type of acceleration. Um, and then once, once it gives me that power, it just feels like it's going to just, that power just gushing out of it. And, and it, you've got so much of that power at your disposal, um, which is awesome. I mean, the way, the ride that this gives you is fun. It is exhilarating. It is, uh, it wakes you up. It gives you something to work on, which is something that I like. I like having a challenge. I like having something I'm a little afraid of and learning how to uh, work with it. All right. So... Once this wheel gets its new firmware, it would be my go-to wheel because um, it would have all the power I want to need and have the range. So no more have to worry about, oh, is this a ride that my master can do? Now it's just like, okay, whatever. My EX30 can do anything, so doesn't matter, bring it. Although, I mean, that, that would be the case with the Commander Pro as well. I am, st honestly, I'm still debating if I should get the Commander Pro. Because I can, wait, am I going the right way? I think so. Because that wheel is just, um... I don't know, sometimes, yeah, I do want to challenge and I do want to learn and I do want to um, scare myself a little bit, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just want something reliable and steady and easy and, uh, and I don't have to worry about anything on it, you know, and that would be the Commander Pro. Like that wheel, just felt so much more effortless. Although, right now I'm feeling pretty effortless and I'm going about 40 miles an hour GPS. Um, yeah, I'm not feeling, but I didn't try to do the super quick acceleration to get here. I just, you know, if you want the super quick acceleration, zero to 60 sort of thing, that's when you have to push hard. Otherwise, um, a little lean, a little swing of the arm is uh, good enough. <laughs> this wheel does feel good. But yeah, this wheel isn't one that I'd say, can I thread these two? I am. I'm gonna thread them. If I actually had both the EX30 and the Commander Pro, he totally swerved over this direction. I would have just smashed him. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Um, anyways, if I actually had the Commander Pro and the EX30 sitting in my room and it was time to go on a ride, how many times would I actually pick the Commander Pro over the EX30? about that one. Cruise
cruising at 40 miles an hour GPS um, and it feels fine. This one, I am a lot more comfortable doing heavy braking on. And slow speed stuff. Slow speed, this wheel just feels so solid doing slow stuff. Probably because it's center of gravity is so low on this thing, it feels just, now that's where this <laughs> wheel feels rock solid, is that really slow speed stuff. Um, all right, so what do I not like about this wheel? Those handles I showed you in the other video, uh, the handles, I feel like if you have a good grip on those handles and the wheel happens to spin or turn or twist on you and your hands are in there, it could break something. It could break a finger or, you know, definitely I, it would hurt me. I am scared that it, those handles are going to hurt me. Um, I talked to Grizzla, they said that they should have their EX30 system out by the end of this month, March, and I'm looking forward to that and I really hope they're uh, making their own handles like they did for the Master because um, these, these stock handles scare me. They're a bit owie. I hate the sharp top edge of the foam on this wheel. It hurts. It hurts me and I've heard other people say that it hurts them and um, although since I've lost my pad I'm riding on this and my legs have been touching it and it feels kind of fine. <laughs> um, so yeah it might be something that I can get used to. That might be something I am already getting used to despite myself, so it might be a non-issue soon. Um, some people have reported battery problems. We know Marty's range chest was cut short because one of his packs was bad, and uh, so that was sad. Uh, I, think, I think he's getting his new pack today or he may have already gotten it, so he should be out and about with the EX30 again soon, I'm guessing, unless, I think Leem is taking it uh, to some event in Carlsbad, some PEV, I don't know, look like a big party in Carlsbad this Saturday. So he's gonna have the, e I think he's gonna have the EX30. Ooh! Okay, that was not an insignificant bump. Was that my bump? I don't even remember. No, this is my bump. No, no, I don't know. Oh, that, that must have been my bump. Um, so, yeah. Liam's going to have the EX30 for demo there. I don't think I'm going to that. It sounds... Like, there's a lot of people, and um, not in the mood for that right now. Let's see. What else do I not like about this wheel? Uh, there are those reports saying that there are clearance issues on the wheel. Um, I haven't personally found those issues yet in my own riding, uh, but if there is, then I wouldn't be so happy about that. A lot of the night riders are saying, get this wheel as your, you know, street wheel and get the Commander Pro as your dirt or trail wheel. And that is definitely a plan. Actually, that was my original plan. I was going to do that. And that would be another reason to get the Commander Pro. Um, so Extreme Bull fixed 
the wiring. They gave a relief to the tail light wiring. And um, they're going to give you the option of buying a metal handle that it will be so much or should be so much better than the utterly sharp and crappy plastic trolley handle that they have now. Um, they fixed the inner mud guard, which it's not that it, the problem was the inner mud guard. It was also that the wiring harness um, <clears throat> ran up one of those and it was plastic and it was held on by zip ties and it was dumb and but now it's metal it's a metal oh beeping helmet beeps helmet beeps at uh, 41 miles an hour i'm guessing this means that my battery is low those were my uh that was my 80 percent pwm so okay we have now lost our uh, the ability to go 41 miles an hour GPS. I should check to see what my battery is at. Let me see. I am at 109.8 volts. Oh my gosh, 4%? <laughs> 4 percent? 4 percent battery. Um, 109 volts. Um, okay. I guess I can forgive him for not letting me go 41 miles an hour GPS. Whoa, what was that? I hit a weird thing and he did a weird thing. That was a weird sensation. Um, 4% battery. Okay, so here's the other thing. The V... 13. Remember how aggressively he started to tilt back on me at 5% uh, battery? Like he, he, at 5% battery, the V13 was literally the steepest tilt back I had ever experienced and it was telling me very strongly to get off. Now I could still ride it, but not fast. I think it was limiting my speed as well. I think at that point it did limit my speed and it did, it limited my speed to, I don't know, like three miles an hour or something like that. And, and it had that extreme tilt back. Like it wasn't joking around. It was telling me very aggressively to get off. And at, then this one at 4% battery, it's saying, uh, maybe you shouldn't be going 41 miles an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the difference between in motion and bigode. Uh, extreme bull, too. It's because the Commander Pro also let me go all the way down. Actually, that let me go down way too far at his own expense. And that was both a bad and a good thing. It was a bad thing, but um, because... You know, but we found that it lacked the low voltage safeties for himself. But it also showed us that he kept me totally safe down to 83 volts. And, um, and then we were able to bring him back to life. And by we, I mean Roger. Um, and everything was fine. So, oh, the more I talk about Commander Pro the more I want to get one. He is, he was a really great wheel for me. And um, I do like how much he took care of me. And not, not a slouch. That is a great, fast, easy wheel to ride. Uh, and he was safe and he looked out for me, you know? This wheel, I don't feel like he really looks out for me. But maybe, maybe it's because I need to, with this wheel, I feel like I need to develop a trust with him. Um, the other two wheels, Commander Pro and V13, it's like you instinctively feel like you can trust them. They're good guys. This wheel is named appropriately. Damon from House of Dragon. Look up that character. 
it's like he's extremely loyal extremely um, capable and everything but you just don't want to be on his bad side but if you're on his good side then uh, he'll take care of you and that's how I feel this wheel will be but uh, we still have to <laughs> figure out how for me to stay on his good side okay so I'm getting to the end of the bike trails and then I still have several miles to go before I can get home and I'm already at 4% battery so a little bit nervous if I'm going to be able to make it of the three wheels which one is the most fun to ride well if you define fun as exciting, exhilarating, having a new wheel to ride, a wheel that you haven't felt the like of it yet, having a little rocket ship between your legs with uh, tons of power and torque and still have a totally smooth and comfortable ride, then this would be the most fun. If your sense of fun is to have the most amount of security and safety features and uh, all that, the V13, and I want to jump off this curb and see what this feels like. Oh my god, that was so cush. Uh, that was so cush and nice. Um, let me see where I am at. 107 volts and 3% battery. Huh. 3% battery and 107 volts. I feel like my volts say I have plenty of battery left. I'm at 40. Oh, I felt a little, I felt a little softness in my pedal. Uh, but I didn't get my 80% PWM beep. So, oh, I'm riding in hard mode too. Uh, I usually ride in medium mode because, I don't know, on my masters, I was getting more wobbles in hard mode. But, uh, after my 55 mile an hour dip on this thing, uh, Roger said maybe try the hard mode because medium mode does, uh, I think, more prone to dips or something like that. So I said okay, so I switched it to hard mode and I haven't found any reason to uh, switch it back. I mean, I'm not having any wobble issues and I like the pedal feel. I, I I like medium or hard pedals. I just don't like soft pedals. acceleration here. I'm also going downhill and the wind is uh, coming from my left side. I was hoping it'd go behind me. Oh, beeps. Uh, I think I exceeded 40 miles an hour. Beep. 
Brooks again. Dang it. Come on. Bumps. I want to turn left. So let's let this car go. And then we're going to take this lane. at 39 miles an hour. Mm. Oh, beeps! <laughs> okay, okay, dang it. <sighs> okay, why am I getting limited? Let's see. A hundred and six volts, one percent battery. All right, the darkness spot percentage is uh, not so accurate. It's saying 1% battery, but I got 106 volts. Um, 96 should be my, it was, should be when I'm dead. Uh, when, wait, oh, when do I get tilt back? I don't know, I guess this is what we will figure out. And on my wheel, if I'm showing I have one bar on my wheel. Oh, hey, this display is actually really darn good. I can see everything. I mean, I still think that it's kind of dumb because I basically feel like I have to um, rotate my head all the way down and point it towards my butt a little or like looking like I'm, well, I'm looking between my legs. I mean, geez, that's not very safe. But uh, I can read everything on it. Huh, interesting. I thought, I thought I needed to put a film on this, but maybe when I'm looking from straight above down, then it actually... Okay, this display is really nice. It's like the biggest display yet. Um, I don't remember the Master Pro display. Is this the same display as the Master Pro? <sighs> oh no, I hear beeps. I think those are my low battery beeps. It's either, boy, I'm not hearing any more beeps. Let me slow down so I can hear my wheels beeps. Uh, I'm not hearing beeps now. I don't know. I'm sure he's unhappy about his battery situation. Uh, I really should turn on my phone's GPS so I can figure out how to get home. But I don't know, maybe I'll remember. No, I won't remember. I'm gonna so get lost. All right, let's try. Yeah! All right. Um, what's that? Thank you. I don't like it when people talk to me. When I'm wearing this visor, no one's supposed to be able to see me. All right. Need to remember, oh, dang it. I was supposed to be asking my phone to tell me how to get home. But then that guy started talking to me and I don't want to run into this car. Conclusion. Did I give a conclusion? I love the EX30. I love the Commander Pro. Um, I don't like the Commander Pro suspension. Not that I don't like it. I like it fine. I just worry about the longevity of it. And if something happened to that suspension, I don't know how to fix it. Versus this one, 
if something happens to it, we know that we can change out the, the shock and we know we can change out the linkages. So we know what to do with this one. Um, the Commander Pro, the Sherman S, and the V13, those type suspension systems, I don't know what to do with those and I, I don't really like that. Um, it seems like you're just stuck with the stock configuration. You can't really upgrade it. You can't really do cool things with it. You know, make new special different linkages. I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. Um, if I had unlimited funds, I would definitely have this wheel and the Commander Pro. Those are my choices. Why is the V13 not on my list? Well, I don't need all of those resources put into safety like that thing has. I would rather have those resources put into performance, which is what Begode and Extreme Bull does. All right, I am going to turn right here. So now you'll see, um, I don't know, people like to see how the wheel rides in city with traffic situations. So now I'm in city traffic situations. I'm hearing beeps. I think when I go too fast, my wheel is beeping at me. Maybe I should turn down my music a bit so I can hear. Oh wait, didn't we figure this out on the Commander Pro? The um, low battery beep started at 105 volts. But these beeps are not that, because I think I'm still at 109 volts. Unless if all of my data is wrong, my uh, darkness spot data. Come on, darkness spot, please. Come up. I'm at 106.3 volts. Hundred and six point three. See how many miles we've gone. Forty six point one GPS miles, all fast miles, uh, thirty mile an hour average. hearing beeps. I, the wheel is beeping. I don't know what he wants. Those aren't my PWM helmet beeps. I think it's just slow battery beeps. So we can ignore that. I just want to be able to make it home. So I turned around at 36% battery. That is uh, not something I would have done by choice because I think that's a uh, cutting it probably a lot too tight. <laughs> but I was <laughs> having so much fun just riding and talking. I. Uh, lost track of my voltage at a uh, hundred volts 
0% battery per darkness spot. Um, it's darkness spot is saying 56.5 miles. My GPS says 51 miles. I guess I'll stop. I'm having constant low battery beeps and I think I have tilt back. I think the tilt back started at 100 volts or 99 volts somewhere around there. I'm gonna bring this down see if you can tell. Let me see if there's a car behind. Yes there are many cars behind me. Uh, it's uh, tilting more and more. I think I'm gonna maybe get off this busy road. Uh, I'm going, let's see, 22.7 miles an hour. I'm now being limited by tilt back. 99.2 volts. Percentage has given up. All right, I'm gonna get off this busy road. Riding a tilt back is always fun. Oh, why does it feel like it's tilting more? What the hell? Is it because of my speed? All right, I'll slow down. I'll slow down. Calm down. What's wrong with you? I'm at 100 volts, so you need to calm down. The nice thing about these wheels is that you can get <laughs> okay see that braking just gave me 101 volts you can regen so easily with uh, some braking here and there like uh, I don't know if I showed on the Commander Pro I was trying so hard to wear that Commander Pro battery down and I was doing everything and it was so frustrating because it seemed like it was just it kept regening all the battery back that I was trying to use up um, that one just did not want to run out of battery uh, this one actually has the low battery safety tote backs built in and it's annoying me these uh it's all tilty on me It's harder. It's harder to start up when it's so tilty like this. Wait, why does it feel like it's tilting even more? Okay, Wheel, you are going to get me home. So don't give me this crap. Let me make sure my feet aren't too locked in. So if he decides to drop me, I don't drop with him. I wanna, I would like to be able to jump off if he drops. I don't know how much of an option this is. I'm having to lean forward so much. Why are you fighting me so much? I'm only at 99.6 volts. Oh my gosh. Oh, cause we're going uphill. Okay, we're going downhill. He's so unhappy. But I thought I could go to 96 volts. I'm only at 99. I am not happy. <sighs> I still have many, many more volts to go enough volts to get me home if it'll just let me access it
um, may have to get custom firmware to let me access. Oh my gosh, I can't push up this hill. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is the most I got. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, downhill again. Oh, I'm my feet are getting twisted up real bad. But I'm still at 99 volts. It feels like he's getting so much more severe and yet my volt hasn't dropped so I know maybe some of it is because I was going uphill but seriously come on I thought I was supposed to be able to access to 96 volts 99.5 and I feel like I'm limited to this speed which is oh it's not too bad 13.6 miles an hour GPS um, it's still giving me a decent speed to get home with <sighs> my back hurts <laughs> my back hurts from from fighting this tilt back because it's making me like bend over at the hip to fight it all right, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna flip them around. So that is a cool little trick because he's so tilty this way, we're gonna turn, because right now the, these pads are digging real hard into my shins, um, the way this tilt back is. So I'm gonna pull over, I'm gonna flip my wheel around and ride it backwards, oh. Check out this tilt back. Oh look, he's going back down. He's leveling out. Not enough though. Come on, turn around. All right, let's see. Oh, I can't. I can't do this because these pads, these aggro pads, I can't get my foot in. Okay. Oh my gosh. He doesn't even want me sitting on him. What the hell? Okay, he's getting... He's getting to be quite uncomfortable to ride. Ugh. Okay. No more stopping. We just need to get home at this point. This is not fun anymore. Whew. Be nice and gentle to the horses. I'm feeling him tilt up again. I don't know why. I'm not doing anything. I'm being good. I'm at 11 miles an hour. I'm staying away from the horses. And he keeps tilting on me. I'm getting my right foot out, right leg out of the pad so that the pad isn't digging into me so hard. Everyone is looking at me like I'm crazy. Oh, jeez. This hurts. No, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. Damn it. <sighs> mm. Mad at this wheel. Ugh. Nope. He's not going to let me scooter him. Can I scooter him back? Hey everyone.
everyone. All right, so here is me trying to break out of my bad habit of just leaving you guys hanging at the end of a video because I'm just done. <laughs> so um, what happened? Let's see, at about 105 volts, um, around there, then he started doing the low battery beeps. And then um, at around 100 volts, he started doing the tilt back and then um, and steady beeping. And then at around 99 volts, 99.8 or 6 or something like that, 99 is 99 something, then um, he shut off. He turned off on me. And um, I don't know what uh, the, my video got, so I'm going to have to check that in editing. But... Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was fighting. That was a very severe tilt back. So that's great, except that it would be nice if it actually did it at 96 volts. So I guess it is by design. I, I don't know. Or I don't, I don't know. Never mind. I don't know. Um, but uh, we're going to talk to them, and I guess uh, they're going to have to set it to 96 volts or something. Maybe they were concerned about uh, it drawing too much power or whatever. They just want to keep um, the battery safe, or I don't know. But uh, whatever it is, right now it's 100 volts, around 100 volts, and then around 99 volts it'll drop you. It'll just shut off. Um, I think... I wasn't moving when it shut off. It'll sh it should show it should have shown in the video, but I think I was trying to figure out how to get back on him. Now, yes, I was fighting the tilt back and the beeps, and it was warning me, and I still was like, no, I got to 96. Come on, you know, give me some more power. So I was pushing it, but then that is my job. My job is to test it and push it to its limits and push it until it dies, which it did. <laughs> so I did my job um, and then let you guys know what the safety is and what um, what the limits are, right? So right now we have two major issues. One is the high-speed oscillations, and then the second is the 100-volt, um, 99-volt shutoff. Not just tilt back, but shut off. And then you saw how severe that tilt back was. And usually I can spin it around and ride it backwards. And then, but it was like countering everything that I was trying to do. It was like countering it, which is like kind of creepy. But um, yeah, I think he is aptly named Damon. Um, so uh, both of these issues should be able to be easily fixed with firmware. So yay to that. And um hopefully we will see that firmware fix soon um but uh no big issues i was able to um a very nice gentleman in a big white van <laughs> stopped and um gave me a ride home i actually needed a ride home i thought maybe i could keep babying him all the way home but uh it was it was rough so um the gentleman was very nice and kind. Thank you so much. And um, came at the perfect time, too, to give me a ride home. So that was awesome. Luckily, I wasn't very far from home anyway. So it wouldn't have been too big a deal either way. But I am definitely grateful for the ride. Um, I am so exhausted from fighting that tilt back. That is a major tilt back. And not only the tilt back, but it was not going to let me go fast at all. Like it took everything I had to fight the tilt back. And then at a certain point, I couldn't even fight the tilt back anymore. So, um, it, and, and it limited its own speed. So that's good. It has safety things in place. Just, um, give us a little more battery. Come on, <laughs> let us access to 96 volts. Right? So anyways, um, that concludes, <clears throat> this was a very, eventful and good ride i mean i tested out a lot of stuff found out a lot of things and pushed him to his limits and uh, we got to see how he acts at low battery so all in all i think it was an awesome success he is over here right now um i still have to put him on charge but uh, everything should be fine. Oh, my hand's shaking because I'm getting tired. Anyways, thanks for joining me and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.